Okay, so you're at the end of your of your song. You've um, spent some time. You've got the arrangement right. Um, you spent some time in the mixer, balancing your levels off, um, so everything balances and you can hear everything. You've put your pans in using the pan pots. Um, next thing to do is to bounce it down um, into a format that you can take away and play um, on a another system. So, for example, as an MP3, so you can put it on your MP3 player or your phone, or uh, as a full quality audio file, which you can then drop onto a CD. Um, so, first things first, we just need to check the main output level. Um, as I said before, keep your output and your master at zero and work everything else to that. So, for example. As you can see, my mix at the minute is clipping into the red here. Rather than turning this down, I'm going to click and hold and select all of my tracks. And I'm going to bring them down to a point that they're, they've got a decent level, so sitting up around here but not clipping in the red. So I've looped over a section where everything's playing because that's going to be the loudest part of the track. Um, and you can do that just by click and holding around the top here by the number and then drag in for the length you want it for. Okay, so I hit play. Okay, so that seems okay. It's got a decent enough level and it's not hitting in the red. Um, if you just click there, it resets the um, the meter so you can see what's happening. Um, we don't want that going into the red there uh, because it will distort. Um, so that's, just, that's the first thing to do. Just if you're happy with your mix, select everything. And as long as you've not got any automation on, which we won't have at this point, um, you can just click and hold and just slowly bring everything down while it's playing until you can see that it's not clipping into the red. It's always worth checking sections where everything all of a sudden comes back in because sometimes you can have a bit of a glitch there. So let's just have a play of this section. <laughs> So that's fine. I could probably give it a little bit more level than that, um, actually. Um, so we just ease that up a touch. Okay, we'll leave it at that for now. Right then, so the next thing to do, I'm just going to click my loop back on, is we're going to add in um, a dynamic insert, uh, a limiter for now just to make sure that as it's bouncing down there's no clips and also just to bring the level up a little bit so it'll sit alongside other uh, sounds. Um, so if I go to dynamics, down to limiter, stereo. We're just going to use Logic's built-in limiter for now. We're not really mastering at this stage. Um, that's a whole other process. We're just using this so that we can take it away with us um, uh, and listen to it where we want to. So I'll just load the limiter in. And what that's going to do is just make sure that the track never goes above whatever we set this output level to. Uh, its default setting is 0 dB, but I always pull that back to about minus 0 0.5, uh, just because apparently CD doesn't actually cope with 0 dB. So we'll just bring that back to minus 0 0.5, and you know you're not going to get a clip. So if I press play again. Okay, so that's fine. Um, so what I'm also going to do is just because we could push the level a bit more and because we've got this limiter on here, it's got a, a stop point where it won't go above minus 0 0.5. So we're just going to push up the gain a little bit. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Like I say, we're not properly mastering the track here. We're just doing a, a bit of rough mastering on it uh, for now. Um, 
we'll get on to mastering properly later on. But um, what I've done is just push the gain up, and as you can see here, it got louder. And also, you could see the level on the meter um, is now more up this area here. And what I'm looking for is I'm listening, you've got to listen at this point as well to make sure you're not pushing it too far and distorting it. Um, okay, so that's that's way too much there. Um, what you want is to it to be peaking up here, but for there to be some movement so you've got that dynamic range. You're not squashing all the life out of it. Okay, so once you've done that and you're happy with your setting there, next thing to do is to work out what you're going to bounce what length of the track you're going to bounce so we're going to go from bar one so what i'm going to do click and hold at the top i'm going to draw a loop across the entire track okay that's going to set my locators for me you can see down here that's set the locators from bar one to bar 69. i'm just going to check the end because i've got a bit of a delay tail on there so <laughs> Okay, so that's gone by there. So if I pull my loop back to there. If you want to, while you've got the loop on, if you need to listen to a certain track, if you press play, it's always going to go back to the start of the loop. So just double click um, around about there. Okay, so I know that's fine now. What I'm also going to do though is this is my start point. I'm just going to pull it back by this third one. One to there just to make sure there's no glitch at the start of the track sometimes with logic if you set it at bar one it just misses the first beat so to make sure that i catch everything i've just pulled it back by one tiny little beat so I press play. okay so that's my locators set next thing is to just click on bounce and then it should drop it into the bounces folder um, of the particular track um, if you want to put it anywhere else, you can drop it on the desktop, for example. Um, make sure you give it a name. So we just call this um, Programming Track. And then I'm going to bounce it down as a full quality audio file. So I'm going to tick PCM. I'm going to do it as an AIFF. You can choose WAV, Sound Designer 2 or CF, but I'm going to use AIFF. 16-bit resolution because CD still only works at 16-bit, so there's no point bouncing at 24. Um, leave the sample rate as it is, 44-100. File type, make sure that's interleaved, so it'll be a, a stereo file, one stereo file. Um, and dithering, we don't actually need because we're not coming down from 16-bit to 24-bit, 24-bit to 16-bit, so let's select none. So that's fine for all of those. As you can see here, we've got the start and end points that are set. Um, I'm going to bounce an MP3 as well. Now I'm going to bounce it as a full quality MP3. So I'm going to make sure that's on 320 kp, kbps uh, on both of those. Um, use best encoding, filter frequencies below 10 hertz, um, joint stereo again. That's fine. If you want to write all the ID3 tags, you can um, click on that and do that. I'm not going to bother for now. And then all that's left to do is I make sure it normalizes off because I don't want it to normalize it. I've set the levels and I'm happy with those. I don't want Logic to do any of that. Um, and I can either do it in real time and listen to it as it goes down or I can click it into offline and it will do it inside the comp. So, and then you just click bounce. And as you can see, it's bouncing the track down. There we go, and that's finished. Um, and as that's converting, because we bounced it to the desktop, if I just hide Logic a second, you see, there we go, there's our track for CD and our track for MP3.